So where we left off, we finished the uh, last step here with the, the foundations of our ship uh, in our 3D level with some uh, setup reflections and lighting and whatnot. And we add the rigid body and the collider and all that, but the ship just sort of still sat there. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to talk about how we're going to make this uh, actually a vehicle a racing game, right? How we're gonna make this work. So we're gonna start off by covering some concepts here, all right? So before we get into talking about code, before we get into actually applying stuff to our vehicle and turning it into this racing game, it's really important to understand what we're trying to achieve, uh, what the physics is actually going to be doing. We actually are not going to be doing live coding today because it's not that important. I always hold the belief that if you're a programmer, then you kind of already know a lot of this stuff and you don't care. And if you're not a programmer, then you don't know any of this stuff and you don't care, all right? And so no one really benefits from live coding, okay? So instead what's gonna happen is we're going to explain the concepts of what the code's doing, we're going to look at it, and it's all commented and everything, and then we're going to use it. And if you have any code questions, we're gonna have plenty of time for Q&A, you can ask me, we can walk through specific bits or whatever, but for the most part, the actual code is less important than what we're trying to do with it, and I feel that's what we really wanna focus on. First off, there are some controls we're interested in, all right? These are the things that we are looking at for from the player. We are interested in the vertical input axis, which we are going to map to this concept of thrust or the thrusters of the ship, what's going to propel it forward and backwards. We are interested in the horizontal axis, which is going to be our rudder, and our rudder is gonna be used to yaw the ship. Remember, yaw, rotate on the Y axis, yaw the ship, and then finally we're going to have a brake button, not an axis, to say are we applying the brake, all right? And we're gonna have a couple different types of braking and things like that. So those are really the inputs that we care about for this project, just these three, all right? And I had mentioned before, we're not using Unity's built-in gravity. We're actually using some custom gravity. We're gonna handle gravity ourselves because the way we apply gravity is going to be different depending on what scenario we're in. So really, the way the, the vertical physics of this game works is our vehicle is applying some hover force. It's, it's lifting itself up, right? It's a hover vehicle. And we are going to have some gravity pushing it down, all right? Now, when the ship is over the ground, when the ship is just basically hovering over the track, we're gonna have a, a normal amount of gravity. I say normal, it's actually a fairly extreme. So Earth's gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared towards the center of the Earth. That's what's pulling us all down if we're at sea level. But uh, we are applying a, a around 20 meters per second squared gravity down. So a little over double Earth's gravity. And this is important because our ship is going really, really fast. And when we played around with this, when we looked at the original version of the game, uh, regular gravity was too slow. It felt like we were just floating, and then we really wanted it to pull us to the track, and so we are gonna apply a, a greater amount of gravity. Also, when we leave the track, so if we were to make a jump, or you know, just any time we're above the track, so far above the track, we're gonna apply a, a significantly larger amount of gravity to quickly pull us down to the track, which is gonna make jumps feel very fun. All right, so when we go over it, it's gonna boom, pull us down to the track, right? It's gonna, it's gonna feel pretty cool. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we calculate that hover force uh, in a moment here, but it's also important to know that this gravity that we're applying, which we could just modify Unity's physics to change the gravity through the physics settings, but we're not, we're applying it ourselves because gravity isn't always going to pull us straight down. All right, and as a matter of fact, gravity is always gonna pull us towards the track. And what this is gonna do is, this is gonna allow us to simulate centrifugal force. All right, so you know, if you're ever uh, doing a, you know, a loop-de-loo, right, or the car goes up and over, right, why when it gets to the top doesn't it fall down, right? It's because of the concept of centrifugal force, which is an imaginary force, but at any rate, it's what makes the ship stick, stick to the track. So instead of gravity pulling us down, gravity is gonna pull us to the track. Right, so that we can make these banks and go upside down and all this other stuff. And we can see that here in this image, right? The track is represented by this cube and the ship is tracking to the track, right? It's, it's seeing what's called the normal of the ground, so the, the arrow pointing directly away from the ground and it's aligning itself to that. So it wants to adhere to that while it's hovering. When the ground disappears, if there is no ground, either you've made a jump or you've flipped over or whatever, 
uh, the ship is going to automatically use just world up. The upward and the y axis is the new ground, which means it's going to self right itself. It's going to flip back over, all right, in case it were to roll for any reason. It's going to self right, and then it's going to apply this greater gravity to get us back to the ground quickly, as we can see in this image here. So that's effectively what's happening. So we're applying two types of gravity, depending on whether we are on the ground or not, and our gravity is always pulling us towards the track. All right, which is going to make it feel much more cool. You're going to really feel the, uh, the, the velocity as it's pushing you into the track as opposed to just pulling you towards down, uh, which may not make any sense depending on the, where you're at in the course. It's probably important to point out that the track isn't entirely flat the whole way around. Right, exactly. So rather than the ship kind of remaining relatively upright on the side, it actually banks with it. And you'll notice this a lot more when we... Exactly. Exactly. If you were in a hairpin turn and you had your ship and gravity was pulling it down, you would just start falling off the track, which is not what we want. We want to be pushed into the track and it's going to adhere to the track. It's going to feel much better. So I talked about this hovering. We have this hovering concept and uh, we could just apply some force to the vehicle to lift it. However, we're going to find that that never really gives us good results. All right. Uh, if anyone's ever tried to make a cover game or seen any of the articles or anything you'll see everywhere on the internet about making hovering games, what always ends up happening is your vehicle is pushed up by a hovering force, it gets to its maximum height, and then gravity pushes it down and it gets caught and it's pushed back up and it just does this over and over and over again. And it never actually sits where we want it to sit as far as hovering does. So we're actually going to control this using a concept called a PID controller. Now, this is not unique to Unity. This is not unique to this game. This is a concept that you can find in microcontrollers, in robotics, in electronics, uh, in self-driving cars, in drones, and everywhere. The concept is just PID controller, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. Now, the nice thing is, is it's not super important for you to understand how this works. It's not, like I said, it's not a Unity-specific thing or whatever. Right? Instead, we just know that we're going to be able to pass a value into it, and it's going to give us a value back. And that value is going to get us to where we want to be. But to further explain the concept of what a PID controller does, we're going to look at a couple scenarios. So what we're used to doing is something that you would just maybe consider a proportional control or a P controller. And what that is, is if you're using, say, like LERP or just applying some force or if you're saying, I want to go there and I just continually push myself towards a spot or whatever. And what ends up happening is you overshoot. Right? If I'm saying, keep pushing myself in that direction, and then I get to the spot and go, no, wait, I passed it, turn around, turn around, and then I, I, and then I pass it the other way, no, wait, turn around, turn around. That's effectively what we have when we're just applying a force. The ship goes up, passes the line, comes down, passes the line, and it never reaches the line because it just bounces. Right? And so that is what happens when we just apply a proportional amount to this equation. When you have a, a PI, proportional integral controller, right, it gets a lot better. Uh, the integral component counterbalances the proportional one, and you get really close to where you want to be, but there's always still a little bit of oscillation, a little bit of error in there, and it's never quite exact. And then you add a PID controller, and you get exactly what we want, a car that will lift up to the right height and stop, which is exactly what we want. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. It may seem confusing or the code may not make sense, but that's fine. It's kind of a black box thing. This is a common just controller type in all sorts of different industries. We are just applying it here to get our vehicle to behave the way we want it to, as, as we would want it in a real life hover car, right? That would get it to the right height and then hold it there, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, as we're driving, we need to figure out how we're gonna do yaw and then banking. And so again, yaw is that y-axis rotation, right, to make our vehicle turn. Now we're also going to add banking, and banking is a purely cosmetic portion of the game. Yaw is enough to get our vehicle to turn, but the bank makes us as players say like, yeah, I'm going really fast, I'm banking into this turn, and it feels really cool. And so we can see here the difference between the two. We have one ship on the right that is simply yawing, right, just with the rudder. All it's doing is turning. And it's effective, but it's kind of boring. And then the ship on the left is actually banking 30 degrees into a turn, which feels much more cool. All right, and so again, that's what we're doing. It's a cosmetic addition, but it makes it, makes it feel more real as a player. You have this banking and you have this yawing concept, all right, uh, and that is going to be applied to the ship's body. 
Finally, we want to talk about the counter forces that are being applied to our vehicle. So we're propelling forward, that's easy enough, and we are lifting up, which is a little bit more complex, the hovering with the PID controller and stuff like that. But really, the racing game is also very much about the counter forces, what is preventing us from going in infinite speed, what is preventing us from flying off the track, what is preventing a lot of this stuff from happening. And so we have three distinct counter forces, brake, drag, and friction. All right, so first and foremost, our vehicle is going to have some velocity. It's going to be traveling uh, in some direction with some magnitude, it's gonna be moving, right? And when we apply a brake, our brake is not, in this instance, going to be a counter force pushing in the opposite direction. Our brake is just going to be a subtractive force from our velocity. It's just gonna reduce our velocity exactly. We do this so that if we, if we counter brake, we push against our vehicle, we reach zero velocity, the brake would then make us start going backwards, but that's not what a brake does. So instead, a brake wants to reduce your velocity to zero. That's what our brake is going to do. So brake is going to directly uh, counter our ship's velocity. Now, we're gonna break our velocity into two parts, the forward speed and the sideways speed. All right, the forward speed is us, how much of our velocity is going forward down the track, and the sideways speed is how much of our velocity is us bouncing off of a wall or trying to skid around a corner or losing the grip on the road or whatever. Now, the forward speed is directly countered by drag. Air resistance uh, is just the drag that's being applied. That's what's going to prevent us from reaching our terminal velocity, or if we're going above terminal velocity. As we go faster, drag gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually our drag is so great that we cannot possibly go any faster. That is what terminal velocity is, and that's how we're applying it. So drag is always reduced, or reducing our propulsion until eventually we just can't go faster. Now our sideways speed is being uh, uh, countered by friction. That's uh, what keeps us on the road. If we had zero side friction, when we tried to turn, our car would turn sideways, but keep going the same direction and slam into the wall, right? Like all the eighth graders at a roller skating rink, right? Uh, no turning whatsoever. If we have perfect friction, which this game does, we never slide, we can't drift. Anywhere in between gives us a variable control to if we wanna have drifting in our game. Now this particular game is gonna have perfect side friction. You'll never drift, you'll, you'll hug curves and all that stuff, right? You won't, you won't slip. But if you reduce the side friction at all, and I have in the code, I have a comment right here is where you would do it, you could add drifting if you wanted to just by reducing that by some factor, right? And you can control how much you wanna do that. But those are the counter forces there. The last little bit of uh, force that we need to know about are our collision impulses. So when we collide with a wall, right, uh, you have the concept of the equal and opposite reaction, right? We're gonna slam into a wall and the wall is gonna push back against us with some equal amount of force. However, there's always a little bit of that force that gets let off in an upwards impulse. So we slam into a wall and our car kinda wants to pop up, right, just a little bit. And it's enough that our car could pop up over the wall and escape the track by hitting a wall fast enough, pop up and get out. And we don't want that to happen. So whenever we collide with a wall, we are gonna calculate how much of that impact is trying to make us go up, and we're gonna push an equal amount of impact straight back down, right? So that's gonna keep our vehicle on the track. So a vehicle can't go over the track because we're pushing it right back down, right? Now those are the important physical concepts that we're dealing with, right? So we've got our, our friction, our drag, we got you know, the braking, we've got hovering, we've got propulsion, we've got all these different concepts, and now these are just gonna be applied through code. And again, I'm gonna go through the code relatively easily. I don't wanna go line by line, no one wants that, trust me. Uh, but all of the code is completely commented, all right? And so we are gonna just see how we can make this stuff work, how we can turn these concepts into a reality. Switch to 